Here's what's coming up in the Category 5.TV newsroom. Microsoft's Flight Simulator 2020 will launch on August 18th. Samsung expects 6G to launch as early as 2028. The average cost of charging an electronic vehicle in Canada is just $277 per year. Facebook and Sony are preparing to increase output of upcoming gaming devices. A vulnerability in Windows DNS server can allow hackers to run malicious code as admin on all computers on your network. And Lego and Nintendo are making a Lego NES. Stick around, the full details and this week's Crypto Corner are coming up. This is the Category 5.TV Newsroom, covering the week's top tech stories with a slight Linux bias. From the newsroom, I'm Becca Ferguson. After a series of closed alpha tests, Microsoft's Xbox Game Studios and Asobo Studio announced Monday that the next-gen Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 will launch on August 18th. Pre-orders are now live and the game will come in three editions. Standard for $60, Deluxe for $90, and Premium Deluxe for $120, with the more expensive versions featuring more planes and handcrafted international airports. The last part may come as a bit of a surprise, given that Microsoft and Asobo are using assets from Bing Maps and some AI magic on Azure to essentially recreate the Earth in all of its airports. Still, the team must have spent some extra time on making some of these larger airports especially realistic. And today, if you were to buy even one of these larger airports as an add-on for Flight Simulator X or X-Plane, you'd easily be spending $30 or more. The default edition features 20 planes and 30 hand-modeled airports, while the deluxe edition bumps that up to 25 planes and 35 airports, and the high-end version comes with 30 planes and 40 airports. All the airports are still available in the lesser versions, just without the extra detail. Based on what Asobo has shown in its regular updates so far, even the 20 planes in the standard edition have been modeled in far more detail than in previous versions, and maybe even beyond what some add-ons provide today. Because a lot of what Microsoft and Asobo are doing here involves using cloud technology to, for example, stream some of the more detailed scenery to your computer on demand, chances are we'll see regular content updates for these various editions as well, though the details here aren't yet clear. As Flight Simulator 2020 is about to enter its closed beta phase, we can expect to see more details in the coming weeks leading up to the release. While we're still waiting for the mainstream transition to 5G, Samsung is already beginning to discuss 6G, which the company expects to be commercialized as early as 2028. In a white paper published Tuesday, Samsung has said it expects the International Telecommunication Union to begin working on 6G in 2021. The amount of time and work dedicated to developing each generation of networking has shortened as time passes. Samsung said in the white paper that the company expects the earliest commercialized date for 6G to be 2028. It also states its belief that mass commercialization will or could occur by 2030. Samsung believes 6G will equally serve humans and machines as the main users. 6G will, be, will reign in an era of advanced services for truly immersive extended reality, high-fidelity mobile hologram, and digital replica. 6G's performance requirements much, must reach a peak data rate of 1,000 gigabits per second and air latency of fewer than 100 microseconds. For comparison's sake, that's 50 times the peak data rate of 5G and one-tenth the latency. The company has identified the three major pillars and requirements that will make up 6G in order to fully realize 6G performance, architectural, and trustworthiness requirements must be met. 5G was mainly focused around increased performance. Samsung's white paper notes that 6G architectural and performance requirements will overcome hurdles made by the limited computational capacities of mobile devices. Trustworthiness will address privacy and security concerns. Curious if an electric car will save you money on fuel costs? A report in Canada shows that the average cost to charge an electronic vehicle in Canada is just $277 Canadian per year, which is roughly 203 USD. 
U-Switch, who generated the report, looked at the average price per kilowatt hours in 50 different countries, the average mileage per driver, and the average miles electronics vehicles get on a full charge to determine this statistic. Using this method, Canada is one of the least expensive countries to own an electronic vehicle in, since the electricity is relatively cheap in some parts of the country. The most expensive countries are Denmark, Germany, and Belgium, but even in the worst case, we're talking amounts of around $800 per year for the average driver. The data shows how much money drivers can save by moving away from gas-powered cars. If it costs around $60 to fill up, and you need to do that roughly once a month, that means you're paying more for gas in four months than the average electric vehicle owner will pay in a year. Welcome to the world of cryptos and welcome to the Crypto Corner. It has been a fantastic week again. Not of course if we look into the numbers like Bitcoin stayed around 9200 or Ethereum around 240. So no huge developments in this area here. But if we sort by seven days then we see that we had some coins that increased by over 100% like Elrond, uh, DIVI 60%. Over 20 coins increased more than 15%, and only four coins lost more than uh, 15%. Per, uh, percent. So a positive development uh, from that point of view in the market. And if we look, at, we compare, for example, the, the, the history of the big uh, uh, coins in the DeFi market, like Maker uh, or, or Kyber or Zero X, uh, and compare it with the profit of Ethereum, then we'll see that Ethereum stayed more or less flat at 0%, so it lost minus 0.3%, uh, but all these others gained over 1000%. So huge development that is happening under the hood in the crypto market. And so one has to be careful also at the same time on where to invest and how to invest because you might lose uh, a lot of money. One area that is the case is here. You, I don't know if you've seen those, but those are ads in uh, YouTube <clears throat> or even this is a live YouTube channel that is currently uh, transmitting. And uh, in here you see, hey, you can win uh, a lot of money if you just participate in, in this scam. They're all scams, so don't even think about putting some money into it. I can guarantee you, you will never see that money back. Yeah, and so... How they do that, nobody really knows, uh, but uh, you see them as advertisements and also as channels uh, promoting here. And as you can see, this one here, Mr. Kit Kit has got 339,000. It's all fake. Um, so they're masters in, in conning people. <clears throat> also, the famous pump and dumps. So where price goes up because some people are promoting it. In this case, TikTok, some kids started promoting Dogecoin, a coin that has got no purpose and the price went up by over 40-50% in one day. Next few days it came down again. So be careful with these things. Don't participate there. The moment you hear about some pump, uh, it'll, it'll be too late again because those that started that pump are already planning on how to uh, leave that one. Next is um, if we look into compound and uh, if we want to borrow or lend some money, <clears throat> then there is some collateral factor in here. Yeah, so 60%. In other words, if I put in 100%, then I can take 60% out. So there's over and over collateralization in, in this industry. And that's how most of these uh, are staying uh, on a fairly low risk uh, basis. But there has been a new development. Ava is the first one that is starting now uh, with credit uh, uh, credit delegations. In other words, you can have a credit without even putting up some collateral. And the way they solve that is that you have to sign a contract with a per per person that gives you or whom you give the money uh, and it will be uh, sorted out in a, in a legal or regular court in case there is a default. So that's an interesting development I find. Now, another interesting development, but more on the negative side, or not negative, but one has to be careful, is Tether. Uh, as you remember, Tether has got um, uh, 
uh, from the 24-hour volume, it's number two or usually number one. So you see it's very close to Bitcoin with 19 billion uh, being traded you know, in 24 hours. Most of that is between exchanges or coming from China because Chinese like to put the money into Tether to keep it there. But on the downside is they have been sued by the uh, New York Supreme Court because some money disappeared uh, between the company of Bitfinex and Tether and they both belong to the same company. Uh, and and it's a it's a bank that went bankrupt and uh, uh, 850 million dollar disappeared, and so this uh, court wants to go into into detail in regards to tether. So that might be really bad news for tether. So be careful, also on your end with tether. Now the last three ones is what's going to happen coming week. The first one is here Binance. Binance has got an exhibition that started today <coughs> with fairly good keynote speakers. As you can see, it's ongoing already. Um, there are a lot of Chinese people speaking in Chinese, which I find interesting. So it's a, there's a shift towards Chinese speakers. Um, and it's a good exhibition. And the other one is Asia uh, blockchain, always a huge one. And also very good speakers like Chris Hatfield or uh, Hester Pierce, uh, Adam Back, one of those big uh, Bitcoin gurus that we have. Um, um, Vitalik Buterin just uh, for fun uh, go subscribe to this here and listen to Vitalik uh, it's if you understand something uh, kudos to you and the last one is the Singapore blockchain uh, also with some very good speakers and very good headlines uh, interesting presentations that they're giving here like Charles from uh, Cardano is going to do some presentations He's always fantastic to listen to. Roger, a uh, very controversial person in the industry, uh, is also presenting. Um, well, uh, just subscribe to these. It's worth the experience and it's worth uh, just following what they're doing. Um, it's great. Uh, and they're usually free. So, yeah, that's it from, uh, from us this week. So I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. And I'm looking forward to see you uh, next week again. So thank you very much for watching. Facebook and Sony are preparing to increase output of upcoming gaming devices. Facebook's Oculus, the global leading provider of virtual reality headsets by market share, is eyeing growth of at least 50% from a year ago for its latest version of head-mounted VR devices, pushing production to 2 million units. Meanwhile, Sony, the world's number two video game console maker after Nintendo by shipments, has also raised production orders for its upcoming PlayStation 5 to around 9 million units, from the roughly 6 million units it had planned earlier this year. The PlayStation 5 is the first completely new generation of the console in seven years, after Sony launched the PlayStation 4 in 2013 and an upgrade in 2016. Facebook's move further underlines the social networking giant's ambition to further expand its footprint in the emerging VR market, where it is the market leader with around 35% market share. Its first all-in-one VR gaming system, Oculus Quest, became a hit after it launched last May. Compared with the cyclical and relatively mature games console market, which is dominated by Nintendo, Sony, and Microsoft, Market Watchers said VR was still a nascent market where a lot of players are trying new applications, but gaming is still the most important segment. CounterPoint senior analyst Karin Chahan said, During the pandemic, the gaming industry witnessed a record number of online player additions as more consumers are considering gaming for entertainment at home. Facebook is looking to further expand standalone VR, which gives users a more immersive experience than PC and smartphone-based VR headsets. The U.S. company said in June it will stop selling Oculus Go, its entry-level VR device, which went on sale in 2018, to focus on the Oculus Quest and Rift offerings, its more powerful and high-end products. Oculus Rift S, introduced in 2019, still needs to be connected to a computer to function. Mark Zuckerberg said in an earnings conference earlier this year that the company's revenue categorized as others reached $297 million for the January-March quarter, up 80% from a year ago, which was driven pri uh, primarily by sales of Oculus products. The VR market is growing. HTC, formerly a leading smartphone maker, shifted its focus from headsets to VR, while Sony launched its first PlayStation VR in 2015. Google, Samsung Electronics, and Huawei Technologies all introduced phone-based VR headsets 
using smartphones as the VR headset screens. Apple has been working on augmented reality technology for years and has reportedly entered a trial production for an augmented reality device recently. The, sh the worldwide shipment of all types of VR devices last year was around 10 million units. Facebook, Sony, and HTC together accounted for 69% of the market. But excluding mobile VR, which requires a smartphone, the overall uh, VR market shipped around 4.3 4.32 million units, with Facebook shipping roughly 1.5 million devices. Microsoft is urgently advising Windows Server customers to patch a vulnerability that allows attackers to take control of entire networks with no user interaction and from there rapidly spread from computer to computer. The vulnerability, dubbed SIGRED by researchers at Checkpoint who discovered it, resides in Windows DNS, a component that automatically responds to requests to translate a domain into the IP address uh, computers need to locate it on the Internet. By sending maliciously formed queries, attackers can execute code that gains do domain administrator rights and then from there take control of the entire network. The vulnerability is present in all Windows Server versions from 2003 to 2019. Both Microsoft and the researchers said that it's wormable, meaning it can spread from computer to computer in a way that's akin to falling dominoes. With no user interaction required, computer worms have the potential to propagate rapidly just by virtue of being connected and without requiring end users to do anything at all. When a worm's underlying vulnerability easily allows malicious code to be executed, exploits can be especially harmful, as was the case with both the WannaCry and NotPetya attacks from 2016 that shut down networks worldwide and caused billions of dollars in damage. Checkpoint researchers said that the effort required to exploit SIGRED was well within the means of skilled hackers. While there's no evidence that the vulnerability is actively under exploit at the moment, Checkpoint and said that's likely to change, and if it does, the destructive effects would be high. Microsoft rated the chances of exploitation as more likely. Many outside researchers concurred. Security researcher Marcus Hutchins fears attackers will exploit SIGRED in an attempt to wage crippling ransomware campaigns. In that scenario, attackers would take control of a network's DNS server and then use it to push malware to all connected client computers. Microsoft issued a fix as part of this month's update Tuesday. Organizations that use Windows DNS should carefully assess the risks and install Tuesday's patch as soon as possible. The collaboration between LEGO and Nintendo will go beyond the LEGO Super Mario series of playsets uh, set to launch in August. LEGO is also making a brick-based version of the classic Nintendo Entertainment System. On Twitter, the official LEGO account posted a darkened video of an upcoming set with the words, Are you ready to play like never before? The five-second teaser shows what is clearly an NES system, a controller and a CRT television, which would logically be composed of plastic LEGO bricks. Can't quite see it? Here's what the video looks like after we brighten it up and resolve. The 2,646-piece LEGO Nintendo Entertainment System set will feature an elaborate build for the brick-based television. A crank on the side of the TV will make an on-screen Mario jump up and down and make the on-screen play field scroll right to left. The set also appears to work with the LEGO Super Mario sets. Clear photos of the LEGO NES were also leaked, showing the 8-bit console with its controller, a Super Mario Bros. cartridge, and a vintage tube television. And on Tuesday, Nintendo posted a video to their YouTube channel which shows the set being built. It'll be pricey, listed at 300 euros. LEGO and Nintendo have not officially announced a release date for the LEGO NES set as of yet, but we expect the announcement soon. Thanks for watching the Category 5.TV Newsroom. Don't forget to like and subscribe for all your tech news with a slight Linux bias. And if you appreciate what we do, become a patron at patreon.com slash category5. From the Category 5.TV Newsroom, I'm Becca Ferguson.